I, I've been there before um, with my shoulder injury and, and a couple other injuries. I guess all the surgeries I've had in my life have been because of football. <laughs> At this point, it, it's about six right now, and hopefully there's not too many more. But um, it's a it's a it's a it's a heart wrenching feeling, especially when uh, a guy goes down with a head injury or some kind of neck injury, um, and they're laying on the field, you know, motionless. That's a, that's a really scary thing. So, um, you know, what we're talking about today is really how we can modify the equipment. And uh, what do you think are some of the considerations that affect the choice of equipment in the NFL today? Well, I think it's great what Intel's doing and how you can apply a lot of that research and technology to uh, making football especially a safer sport to play, especially for kids. But certainly, when I look at the type of helmet I'm going to wear, I'm looking at the helmet that is going to best protect me from uh, any type of serious hits, um, especially, obviously, the, the position I'm in as a quarterback, a lot of times I can't protect myself as I'm standing in the pocket. So in a lot of ways, I guess I'm just a sitting duck. And <laughs> at times, you know, you got to stand in there, you got to deliver the pass, and you're going to take the hit. And the rules are designed to try to protect you as much as possible, but obviously there's those occasions where somebody hits you in the head and the better protection you have in regards to your helmet, your pads, and that kind of thing, the better off you'll be of being able to take those hits. Well, we appreciate you coming uh, with a big game on Sunday. Um, you know, uh, one of the things that was astonishing to me in preparing for this is that some of the hits in the NFL uh, are the equivalent of 150 Gs, and that's like basically taking a car and ramming it 35 miles an hour into a brick wall. So I think when those linemen come at you, that's probably uh, how you feel sometimes. But uh, you know, we're trying to take crash test simulation like we showed in the car and apply it to the NFL. But the real challenge for us, I think, is, is how do you kind of balance the need for speed, agility, um, and viewing with, with you know, the technology. You could come up with a cone head that would probably make you really uh, safe. It wouldn't be a... Right. I guess um, aesthetically, you know, guys would like something that is, is uh, certainly functional and yet, you know, comfortable and you know, designed in, in a manner that you know they can they can fly around the field um, and not look too crazy. But you know the game is only getting faster, and the guys that play the game are only getting bigger and stronger. And so when you think about the future of the game, um, I think that this technology in regards to you know protecting players and how helmets are designed and how you're able to monitor um, you know the impact of a hit instantaneously on the sideline. I think those are all great things and that's something that can certainly help our game and help keep guys out of harm's way. If, for example, they take a big hit in the game and they're going to tell you they're fine and they have to go back in and all of a sudden you're able to test them immediately on the sideline and it shows that you know, they've got one of those red dots that we just saw on the screen uh, which shows that you've had damage done to your brain you should not go back in uh, or else you could do very high risk for further damage. Let's pull you out and and, and bring it back you know, okay. next week. One of the things that's amazing to me is I, I, I uh, graduated Purdue in 1992, and, and the world's fastest supercomputer then was about uh, $300 million, I think, or so, or over $100 million. Now we're basically putting that under your desk. So the kind of stuff we're talking about working on with the NFL is getting real-time simulation like you saw. So the second that someone walks off the field, uh, they can get the analysis and know real-time how the hit was right out of the sensor data in the helmet. So it's almost like having a supercomputer on the sideline uh, of the NFL in the future. And it's not too far-fetched because that supercomputer in 1992 is now basically under all our desks. So think about what we could do in uh, 10 to 20 years from now. Uh, so uh, I've heard you have a good relationship with the Mannings, uh, especially yes. Archie Manning here in uh, New Orleans. Yes, definitely. They're a great family. Archie and Cooper, who's the oldest Manning brother, they, they live here in New Orleans with their families. And They've been, they've been great to my wife bringing that. So um, I have a three-year-old. You have two sons. Congratulations on your Thank new you. son. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, he'll, be, uh, he'll be, uh, four weeks old tomorrow. Yeah. So uh, I guess we're wondering when we're going to start recruiting for Purdue, but we'll hold that question for a second. Um, so have you ever thought about your sons playing in college in the NFL? You know, I have. Um, I, uh, 
as much as I love the game of football, I think what I've also learned is I'm, I'm not going to push them to do anything that they don't want to, number one, or too soon. I think that there's plenty of other things that I would much rather have them do first. Um, I think the first thing I, I already have in my my 22-month-old son, Baylor, and I, I put a golf club in his hand as early as I could. Because <laughs> that's something that he can play with his daddy forever. And then, uh, forever. And then uh, we'll worry about football when the time comes. But, you know, I, I do wonder what the game's going to be like when they start playing. You know, how, how fast, how physical. And um, certainly I think, you know, there's probably many parents in the audience that have kids that want to play football or are playing football. And... Um, I always would hear from my parents just how nervous they would be you know, watching games. I mean, my wife tells me too, uh, especially when you watch your son make that hit or take that hit, and you say, "Get up, get up!" You know, and, um, you know. Obviously, the last thing you want to see happen is, is uh, your child get hurt uh, on the football field. But um, you know, it, it is a rough sport. Um, kids are going to get hurt from time to time. Like I said, I've had six surgeries, and hopefully not too many more. But um, as safe as you can make it, the better. How have you seen the equipment since you've been playing? I mean, this world that we're in here changes oh, yeah. every six months. So, how have you seen the advances in equipment since like, you've been playing? I, I'd say, I'd say the advances in equipment have been good, but I would say that the um, the awareness level for what those types of hits do to you, uh, not only short term but long term. Uh, I think that has really gone to the next level, and that's something player health and safety has, uh, has really come to the forefront in regards to us as players and, and the league. And so I think they're going to start even um, putting more of an emphasis on hey, the type of equipment guys are using and how can we improve uh, helmets, pads, everything else to make this game as safe as possible, obviously all things considered. So we're not going back to leather helmets anytime soon. No, that would, that would be even more dangerous. <laughs> All right. Well, hey, I know we uh, we really appreciate what you do on the field and really, you know, making our uh, Sundays and Mondays uh, wonderful. We know you got a game on Sunday, uh, but we also appreciate what you're doing off the field. I know you guys are role models for so many people. You're an ambassador for the city here. It's the first time I've been back in many, many years, and the city, as you and I talked about, is just absolutely fantastic. So. I know you've got the um, this, the uh, Rudy's Dream Foundation. Do you want to maybe just tell sure. a little bit about what's passionate and yeah. about that? And well, my wife and I established our foundation, the Rudy's Dream Foundation, back in 2003 when I was playing for the San Diego Chargers with a mission to uh, find advancements in a cure for cancer and also provide care, education, and opportunities for children in need. And we've focused a lot of our efforts uh, back at Purdue University, West Lafayette, Indiana, for Morning Lakers. San Diego, where I played five years with the Chargers, and here in New Orleans, where this will be my fifth year here in New Orleans. And I'm proud to say that we've been able to either raise or commit over $6 million in that amount of time to all three of those communities. Thank you. And I can honestly say I'm, I'm as proud of that as I am of anything that um, I or the team could ever accomplish on the field, without a doubt because I, I understand how much I've been blessed with and the platform that I've been given to really get out in the community and make a difference. And certainly here in New Orleans, uh, more so than any place really, uh, especially when you look at the Coast Control in New Orleans and all the work that needed to be done. And uh, my opportunity to come here and be a part of that has, has been such a blessing. Um, but we've got you know, so many great projects going on in town and we're constantly looking for more and more. And so uh, it's just, it's an exciting time to be here in New Orleans, definitely. And you know, I think you and I both had uh, some dust in the camera on cancer, and you're also passionate about a lot of these people are probably working on cancer research. So, yes, that's part of your uh, take, take as my well, hat right? off to you because that's yeah, absolutely. We uh, we do quite a bit with Children's Hospital here in town, as well as back um, back in uh, San Diego. We uh, we're actually in, in the process right now of uh, a one million dollar renovation to a facility here in town called the Hope Lodge, which is a division of the American Cancer Society, which is a facility that houses cancer patients and their families as they come in town to go through that tough ordeal with the cancer treatments. And so they might come in town for three weeks at a time, have no place to stay, they're going to stay at the Hope Lodge and then be able to go back and forth between the hospital and get their treatments and make sure they're as comfortable as possible and make sure that that, that whole process is as comfortable as it can be for them. So that's one of our projects involving 
cancer and, uh, and caring for cancer patients, improving the quality of life. But obviously, like I said, I have to take my hat off to you all for all the work that you're doing as well. So one last question, what technology do you use at home? What, what technology does your wife use? You've got the baby monitor, that probably doesn't have an Intel chip in it, but that's okay. Uh, but you know, I mean, even that, I mean, how far has that come? Uh, video 3D. Exactly. We, yeah. we, we've got the video, we've got the cameras up everywhere, so I mean, you're actually, you know, in the past, I, I can only imagine if you just heard a cry or you heard a beep, you'd be rushing upstairs or rushing into the room to check on your child, whereas now you just kind of peek at the camera and, ah, he's fine. <laughs> But uh, no, it's 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 unbelievable how far technology has come in such a short period of time. It just makes you wonder what you're gonna be able to do here in 10 years. All right. Well, uh, I got one final thing here, and uh, congratulations on your newborn. And since we're both Purdue oh, that's grads, awesome. <laughs> uh, that's awesome. That's good. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. Thank and, you. Uh,